Believe it or not, the biggest community to vote for Raila Odinga in the last general election of August 9, 2022, were the Luos. And then number two, which is actually a shock, was the Kikuyu vote. Kikuyus were the people who voted for Raila Odinga the most, second only to the Luo vote. On the cover of Taifa Leo newspaper today, they have a very interesting topic. Let me just read it for you. And the heading reads, Nitafute to Badili Katiba. That is what Raila is saying to President William Ruto. And then they have a subsection where they're saying, Ruto amependekeza hoja ya kubadilisha katiba ili kuunda wadhifa wa kiongozi rasmi wa upinzani. Hoja iliyovutia hisia mseto. Raila na ya ametaka wadhifu wa waziri mkuu unaoshikiliwa na mudavadi ubuniwe kwenye katiba mpya. Asema kwa sasa mudavadi hana majukumu bayana. So in that heading what Raila Odinga is saying is that he wants to uh, sit down with President William Ruto to discuss uh, how they are going to create the office of the opposition leader and also he is throwing something else into the mix. He wants Musale Mudavadi to be bumped up to prime minister. And the reason he's saying that is because according to him Musale Mudavadi does not have specifically outlined roles. Now in this video I want us to analyze why it is that Raila Odinga is just now bringing in the story of Musale Mudavadi and Prime Minister and why it is a trick by Raila Odinga to sabotage the Kenya Kwanza administration. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, first up, this move is designed to undermine one person in specific, and that person is Rigathi Gashagwa. And it's going to do so in the following ways, if at all it will materialize. Number one, it will rearrange the order of hierarchy. As things are today, at the top of the very top, we have President William Ruto. We then have DP Rigadi Gashagwa. And then just slightly before him, we have the Prime Cabinet Secretary. But the moment we have Musalia bumped up to Prime Minister, he is immediately going to become the second in seniority. Not necessarily the second in command, that will be Rigadi, but the second in seniority. It's going to be President William Ruto as the President, Musalia Mudavadi as the Prime Minister, and then Rigadi Gashagwa will be number three on that list. So if you do the math, with the creation of that office, it is Rigadi Gashagwa who is going to lose. And this order is not going to be rearranged just locally, even abroad. How you receive a prime minister is not the same way you receive a deputy president. A prime minister might have to be received by a fellow head of state. Meaning if Musalia was to go to Uganda, he will be received by Yuri Museveni and not the deputy president. Even when he goes to America, he might have to have a sit-down with Joe Biden at the White House. Prime Minister in most nations in the world is the equivalent of President because that is what they have. Even in the UK, they have a Prime Minister. Also, Rigadi Gashagwa would be further alienated in regards to the power structure because of the following reason. A Prime Minister position automatically comes with the office of a Deputy Prime Minister. A Prime Minister must always be deputized. That is just how it is. But for Rigadi Gashagwa, nobody can deputize him. He is already deputizing the president. So whoever will be Musalia Mudavadi's uh, deputy will be the equivalent of Rigadi Gashagwa. They will be peer to peer. And now it will seem like Musalia Mudavadi will be the equal of President William Samoy Ruto. It's the same thing we saw with the Mwai Kibaki stroke Raila Odinga administration from 2007 to 2013, whereby they were seen as equals. Then also that move would seriously undercut Rigadi Gashagwa's chances to become the sixth president of the Republic of Kenya. Because as things are today, Rigadi Gashagwa is the man who is the closest to the presidency. If anything happens to the president, he immediately takes up those functions. But with Musalia Mudavadi bumped up to prime minister, Musalia will be now seen as the closest to that particular seat. The same way Raila Odinga was really propped up after the 2007 coalition government to succeed Mwai Kibaki. Now, I was really wondering, why is it that President William Ruto wants to create for Raila Odinga the office of opposition? Raila Odinga has accepted that and is telling the president they sit down and discuss, but he's also bringing in this issue of prime minister. I think there are some things he's trying to achieve with that. 
and the first is to sabotage Rigathi Gashagwa, as I've just explained to you. And the reason behind that is that Raila Odinga is very very bitter with Rigathi Gashagwa. Most people think it's Musale Mudavadi and Wetangula, but Rigathi Gashagwa is the one who did a lot of damage, a lot, a lot of damage. If you think about it, Uhuru Kenyatta did his due diligence. He really campaigned for Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga went on to pick a deputy from the mountain who went on to campaign and even convinced a lot of ladies who are 50-50 to vote for Raila Odinga. Martha Karua made the Azimio brand look more legitimate. She legitimized it. And after all that, their efforts bore fruit, but not to the extent that was enough to make them president. Believe it or not, the biggest community to vote for Raila Odinga in the last general election of August 9, 2022, were the Luos. And then number two, which is actually a shock, was the Kikuyu vote. Kikuyus were the people who voted for Raila Odinga the most, second only to the Luo vote. And that's because he picked a staggering 1.2 million votes from the mountain. And he would have honestly picked a lot more if it was not for Rigadi Gashagwa. Rigadi Gashagwa, in fact, was rarely leaving the Mount Kenya region. He was just going around there. He was in Nakuru, Tarakanithi, he's in Kiambu. He was just moving around the Mount Kenya region. Just moving around, moving around. Those who were going around the country was President William Ruto, Musale Mudavadi, and Wetangula. There was no one else moving with the president. So Rigadi Gashagwa really undid what Uhuru Kenyatta did, even just by pulling the chiefs who were being used by Azimio to mobilize some voters on the ground. Rigadi was able to reverse that. He brought attention to that issue. So he's the man who single-handedly prevented the Azimio wave in the mountain. Because that wave cannot be ignored. It really was there. 1.2 million is not a small number. And that goes on to show just the extent of power that a sitting head of state has, even while he or she is unpopular. So because of that, uh, I feel Raila Odinga is targeting Rigadi. Whether he will be going up against him or not, I think he would really like for Rigadi to have a hard time in 2032. Now I also suspect that the other issue is that Raila Odinga is trying to sneak in the opposition into government. Because think about it. The president is Kalenjin. The DP is from the mountain. The prime cabinet secretary is from Mulembe Nation. Now let's assume he has been bumped up to prime minister and he needs to be deputized. Automatically, they will be forced to pick somebody from another community and they are most likely to go for the Kamba Nation. And if they do that, who do you think Raila Odinga will be fronting for that particular position? He's going to suggest Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. So that is what I am suspecting he's angling towards, an involvement of Kalonzo Musioka in government as Musale Mudavadi's deputy. And if that would be the case, in 2027, President William Ruto will overrun anybody who even attempts to vie. And in 2032, Rigadi Gashago will have a very hard time capturing the presidency. And that is what Raila Odinga is preparing towards, to frustrate the succession politics that President William Ruto and Rigadi have prepared behind closed doors. He's looking for ways to interrupt that streak. And there is no better way for him to do that than to boost Musale Mudavadi above Rigadi Gashagwa and to get Musale Mudavadi a deputy who will give him legitimate votes in 2032. And that will immediately trigger an internal power struggle. Already we are seeing there's problems here and there in Kenya Kwanza in regards to power. Now imagine if there is a change of hierarchy. That is going to bring a lot, a lot of chaos and problems. So Raila Odinga's plans are debunked in broad daylight and I honestly don't think that those suggestions are going to pass. Number one, it makes the president look like a liar. He really hit Raila Odinga on that issue of prime minister and other things. That is why he even had to revamp that name and call it prime cabinet secretary. And it's a temporary position because it has not been enshrined in the constitution. But if he goes the constitutional way, he'll be doing the exact thing that he told the people he doesn't want to do. People voted for him because they didn't want that thing of prime minister that Raila Odinga was bringing for himself because had it passed, we would have had Uhuru Kenyatta today as the prime minister. That one I am sure of. He would have finished serving as president. 
he would have vied as prime minister and with Uhuru Kenyatta vying as prime minister. My friend, there is no way a sitting head of state is going to lose. The only reason Raila Odinga lost is because BBI failed and in so doing it failed to have Uhuru Kenyatta on the ballot. But with Uhuru Kenyatta as prime minister, Kalonzo as his deputy, Raila as the president and Martha Karua as his deputy, there is no combination that can beat that. And that is simply because of the element of something called the system. The system will always align itself with the sitting president. And because President William Ruto is able to remove that very possibility of having a prime minister, he was able to secure his own government. But that's just my opinion, guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios.